Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of the Green Wisdom Health Show. I'm Janet Lewis. And I'm Dr. Lewis. And we are here to educate you today about childhood obesity, uh, because it seems to be a very large, no pun intended, problem (laughs) for us now. So this uh, is called The Fix for Obesity and ADD in Children. So many of you out there have brought your kids to us and uh, have requested our help in helping them get healthy and be more calm in school and help them with their grades and um, attitudes. And we have done that for many kids and have got some very good examples and ideas about where all this comes from and what to do about it. So with that being said, Dr. Lewis, could you please educate us a little bit about why our kids are obese and not able to sit still? Well, as I'm trying to calm down my foot, trying to sit still, I'll (laughs) try to let you know. Uh, I'm about ADD, ADHD, too, sometimes. I think our society's creating more of that, not just in the horrible food that we eat that's presented to us, but also because of, you know, the addiction to cell phones and computers and TV. One of the things I I tell people, and and folks, this isn't about childhood obesity. It's about a lot of other things. This is going to apply to everybody. You have to be truthful with yourself and not lie to yourself. And, you know, I apparently got a little bit uh, over enthusiastic last week talking about a person I loved very dearly that gave us excuses of why he can't give up and change anything and create something other than the diabetes that he created. But, folks, you've got to want it. Uh, You have to realize what junk food, snack food, and sweets really are people now think that's regular food and it's not it's something that was a treat back when i was a kid and if you don't want any part of a regular meal there may be a problem but most people don't know what a regular meal is and it's a lot of vegetables and uh, sometimes fruit and certainly salad uh, clean meat you know more pasture raised or organic chicken um well isn't that part of the problem is we're so busy Uh, all the time that a lot of times we don't take the time to make meals for our families like we Mm -hmm. used to back in the olden days you know mothers are out there trying to work a job and come home and cook and it's uh, stressful on everyone in the family and so you're trying to find the quickest fast food product you can or Mm -hmm. something to heat up in the microwave Um, is that not what part of the issue is? Oh, that's a big part of the issue. And it's like, you know, men, if you've got a wife out there that comes home after working all day and then she's required to make a meal, you know, get up and help her. The sexiest thing you can do is wash dishes and, you know, help her out. Amen. Yeah. You want to be sexy, you know, get behind the vacuum cleaner. But, uh, yeah, Janet will say, well, would you, well, do you want me to make this? I said, nope. We get something simple. You know, she'll make a, uh, cucumber, onion and tomato salad which actually I cut all that stuff up because I'm crying with the onion. And it's really, really good. She mixes it up and puts the spices and vinegar. You know, something simple. Sometimes we just do a boiled egg. Uh, sometimes we just do an avocado and maybe just a little bit of this or a little bit of that. And now I've noticed they're starting to poo-poo eggs again. Folks don't fall for it, especially if it's free-range organic. It's much, much better. There's things in the yolk. The yolk is by far much more uh, nutritious than the white part and it's got something in it called uh, phosphatidylcholine which is good for rebuilding the brain so eat the yolk and we've convinced our uh, granddaughter who lived with us for three years but no longer lives there but she's gotten to where she eats it and I'm going to talk about probiotics in a minute probiotics are incredibly important and people People tell me, whether it's parents or grandparents, but I can't get them to eat it. Well, if you give them no other choice, sooner or later they will. If we can convince our grandchild to eat probiotics, I promise you anybody can be converted. Because she was a little handful, and now she calls them Papa's Little Magic Rainbow. Unicorn Sprinkles. Yeah, something. Because we've got it related to she's going to be strong and healthy when she does it so uh, we have a lot of different types of probiotics and you can just open up some of the capsules or we do have it loose too most of the time though parents don't necessarily understand how their kid can gain 50 pounds in a few years even though 
you don't see your child eating extra. You don't give them money to do that. Well, what has happened because the government uh, subsidizes corn, soy, and wheat, that's cheap, and that's what people usually use to sustain their diet. And those are the about the three worst things you can put in your body, unless maybe it's arsenic, cyanide, and uranium. But as far as food, that's terrible. So you've got to find out what motivates the child, and all children are different. That's a challenge in and of itself, and that's what makes a cold beer good after you've dealt with them sometimes. But when the kid, if you really get to know them and pay attention, sometimes they feel like their whole life slips through their hands, and they can't get in control, and they feel isolated and lonely, and then they're put on depression medication. Well, depression, for the most part, comes out of the GI tract, and there's massive amount of research to prove that. There's massive amount of research that said wheat uh, can cause gut irritation and schizophrenia, schizophrenia, et cetera, et cetera. So wheat's one of the worst things you can do. Feeding your baby soy formula, horrible, horrible, horrible. And you can read research that says anything. You can read that soy is good for you, and you can read that soy is bad. You just have to have a spirit of discernment and decide what's true. I think soy is a horrible thing to put in your body. There are some nutrients they can isolate from soy that's actually good, but I'd be wary of that. So carbohydrate addiction is very, very real. And if you look around, most of the snacks are very, very high carb. Plus, they either have sugar or sugar substitutes, which is even worse than sugar. Or they have MSG and high salt. And it's trying to satiate the brain. Actually, it gets them hooked. They're called neuroexcitatory agents which means it excites your brain. Uh, and th- there's even a book called The Dorito Effect. The lady that does Janet's hair and my hair, she said, I, I want to know what's in it, but I don't want to read it. I said, okay, I'll get the book. And I read it, and I explained it to it to her. And she said, oh, my God, really? It's that bad? I said, you got two teenagers. You figure it out for yourself. Uh, <clears throat> so we, as a society, I think we want to have a preference for sweets or starchy foods. I think that's natural. But when it's intensifying or you have a repeated craving for that, that's not natural. So pay attention to that. The physical imbalance that these starchy and or sugary foods causes is not natural, but it gets to be a self-perpetuating cycle. And you have to have balance. Uh, There's a myth that, and I've heard it a lot, oh, my baby will outgrow that. No, they won't. And we'll get into the probiotics, you know, in a little bit. Uh, Most kids that survive mostly on starches, junk foods, snack foods, or sweets never outgrow that. Here's a good example, and many of my patients have heard this. You know, my, my weakness is sweets because I thought Mother's Love was a plate of warm, gooey cookies when I stepped off the school bus because my mother took very, very good care of all of us kids. And she said later, she was in her 80s, she says, Honey, I just, I'm so sorry. I didn't know sugar was so bad for you. And I said, and she was complaining that I wasn't eating enough of her chocolate pie. So I ate a little bitty piece of chocolate pie because I'm not going to insult my sweet dear mother. And I said, Well, it's okay, Mama. You didn't know it was bad for us. And it's not like I got overweight and diabetic. She says, Well, everybody around you is. Uh, and I said, but I only eat small amounts, and I would never have insulted my mother, so I would eat her chocolate pie. And she was an incredible cook, but you have to learn to limit that. And probiotics actually help change your taste buds. Uh, the simple sugars, carbohydrates, are usually derived from cane sugar, beet sugar, and the beet sugar is genetically modified, fruits or corn. Now, I talked about high fructose corn syrup the other day on a podcast about how it ages you i think i don't have my notes i think it said a hundred times faster than straight glucose high fructose corn syrup i think they put it on the market hard and heavy about 1970 and it's really hard on you it ages you incredibly fast and it's full of mercury 
Mercury's not a good thing. So when I talk about things that introduce mercury and aluminum into the system, I'm not poo-pooing vaccinations. I'm poo-pooing anything that has that and introduces it into the body. One of the things Janet does for me is gives me something called magnesium threonate because it actually crosses the blood-brain barrier bonds with these bad heavy metals like aluminum and mercury and carries it out of the body most magnesiums won't work janet didn't know i was going to talk about that one but she loves me enough she does that there is some people that say well you need more of those simple carbohydrates because it helps with serotonin levels and there's even a book that goes on that. And I'm not going to name the name because the book is full of crap as a diet book. It's horrible. If I ate that way to increase serotonin, I would be 400 pounds. And I'm fat right now at 183. So don't fall for the eat that kind of junk to increase serotonin. What happens is when you eat these carbs and sugars, it does an over-release of insulin. And what that does, it sets up a series of very inappropriate or abnormal physical responses in a child or in a teen that can lead to physical problems, psychological problems, and behavioral problems. It's amazing when you cut the junk out of your child's diet how their bad behavior gets good all of a sudden. All of a sudden usually takes three months. But uh, you've got to think about it. You've got to force them. You've got to give them eggs, bacon, uh, if you're going to do the bread, it's better to do it, you know, made out of almond flour. And there's, thank goodness, there's a, a trend back toward more organic, toward whole food like almond flour rather than wheat flour. One of the best things you can dump in your life is anything made out of wheat. When you talk about eggs, you know, a lot of people are going, oh, I don't have time to cook eggs in the morning. You know, one thing that Dr. Lewis has done for our granddaughter is he <laughs> makes hard boiled eggs and because we never know when they're going to stop by he has them done up ahead of time so anytime she comes in she knows that when she sees papa she gets her hard boiled egg and her unicorn sprinkles she tries to con me into chips and salsa too but generally doesn't (laughs) get a lot of that but uh, that's one thing that you could do in the mornings to send a hard boiled egg to school with your with your child at least they're getting some nutrition there yeah good protein and fat And she's gotten much healthier because of that. that, Well, that's why Janet and I do uh, insulin on the labs, because even people that have a good A1C, and that's a 90 to 120-day blood sugar. If it's good, but your insulin is high, still you have that resistance. And that's usually from eating too many fried foods and things that make your cell walls uh, less likely to accept the insulin carrying the glucose in. And that's why you get the excess weight. And the other thing is we hear this a lot from adults as well, and so they're doing this to their children. They skip breakfast because they think that they'll lose weight if they skip a meal. And you actually, it leads to weight gain skipping breakfast. So that's one thing you don't want to do, and it makes them not as active. It makes them not want to interact and do any kind of physical activity because their blood sugar is dropping so low. Um, so they, they crater on their test, too. Right. And again, so if you don't have time for breakfast, the other other thing you could think about doing, um, which is a big hit here, is our glycema core. It's a, a protein drink. It's the good protein because there are a lot out there that don't have the good protein. And when when we say that there's not whey in ours, it's a uh, rice protein so that um that's a healthier alternative. And I actually had a man yesterday that said, I've got a friend that's drinking this protein drink every morning. It wasn't ours. And his cholesterol went through the roof because of the ingredients that were in that protein drink. So you really got to make sure that you give them a good protein, um, something that's not going to give them allergies. A I'll lot tell of, you how good it is. It's what Janet gives me. Yeah. a, a lot. She of actually it. likes me. A little. Um, (laughs) A lot of the stuff that you have out there, the the ingredients in the protein drinks are so bad for you that you're actually causing more weight gain. Yeah, if it's soy protein, run like crazy, dump it. Uh, But there's in the glycema core, it it comes in vanilla or chocolate. Um, It actually has something in it that's called glucomannan. That's a fiber mm -hmm. 
that helps um, people. It helps them with their blood sugar levels. It helps them feel more full. And it it's it a hel- prebiotic. That's a buzzword now too. And helps them make it till lunchtime to be able to not have the big mood swings because when you get into ADD. Um, and ADHD, a lot of times that's from blood sugar levels that are spiking and going low and they feel so bad, they're just acting out. So you want to make sure you've stabilized the blood sugar and there are those things in glycemic core. There's also that in eggs. So if you can give them an egg, the protein, it will help carry them, carry them over until lunchtime. Yeah, you know, that's that's a really good point. And we get a lot of grandparents in here says, are you saying I'm a bad grandparent because I don't feed my grandchildren? I thought, well. No, well, think, I'll, I'll try to be nice. Think about it. Most of the time, they're giving them a bowl of cereal. <clears throat> yeah, full of glyphosate. That's going to be a bigger and bigger thing. And it's like finally, you know, two decades after saying that Roundup is a horrible thing and genetically modified foods is a horrible thing. Finally, they're coming out with what I've been saying for about two decades. It's Maybe you're not gluten intolerant, which is a problem, but maybe you're glyphosate intolerant. And I noticed that was one of the biggest shared articles we had was the one about Honey Nut Cheerios um, being sprayed, that they found out those were sprayed. And uh, people are like, oh, my gosh, I'm give, giving my kids this every morning. Well, then they've got sugar on them on top of it. So and pasteurized milk. If you're going to do milk, get the mm-hmm. raw stuff. So by the time they get to school, they are all hyped up. And then the teacher's trying to get them to behave. And then they get diagnosed with having a... Um, ADD, ADHD, and behavioral problems, and then they drug them down. Right. Uh, So, you know, you you have to give kids attention. You have to learn what motivates them. And again, you know, that's a jigsaw puzzle. There was an interesting article from Journal of Psychiatry, or Journal of Clinical Psychiatry, I think it was, uh, behavioral change after the intake of carbohydrate-rich foods has been very well documented. It says fatigue and impaired performance on test and concentration and speed occur two hours after the carbohydrate consumption. That's when you go into hypoglycemia and, and the, the crater. Uh, Journal of Circulation you know, talked about uh, kids that had high insulin levels following high sugar meals. Their overly excited nervous system because it, it over-releases adrenaline as well as insulin. And to that end, whether it's the low blood sugar levels or the activation of the adrenaline, which is fight or flight response, they have problems paying attention, problems in behavior and mood are almost certain to occur. And, and these are well-researched articles. You can look them up. Well, one of the things that you can also give your child is something called 5-HTP, especially if they're able to swallow. It's a little tiny capsule, and it's 5-hydroxytryptophan, which is an amino acid, uh, and it plays an important role in the production of serotonin. So it has to do with the association of feeling of well-being. Peace uh, of God. Yeah, a, he- a healthy mental outlook and mood. Uh, it also helps with deeper sleep. And what we have found with the kids that we give it to here locally is that they generally do a whole grade average better on their test. If because they can't swallow a pill, stir it up in something, you know. It keeps them focused. You Whether know. it's the oatmeal you shouldn't be eating or applesauce, you know, make sure it's organic and no high fructose corn syrup but added. It, but it's something that's natural that will um, actually help them stay focused on their testing and um we used to give it to our son when he was in high school here and he always did better on his testing especially the kids that freeze up right before they go to take a test and they know the answers but they suddenly can't think those are great to take 5 htp about an hour before they would go to school so um consider that as well i mean we have natural natural help here you know and then you get into lunch lunch at schools Uh, Most of the time that includes some more carbs, some chips, a Coke. And so you've got this roller coaster of where you've given them this this cereal in the morning with all this sugar on it. And then they took a big dive and at lunchtime you hype them back up and then you give them back to the teachers. And that's, that's why keto is so popular because you're starting to burn fat rather than burn glucose or fructose. I think it was fructose that makes you age 100 times faster. I think that's what I said the other day. But ladies, it doesn't matter. It makes you wrinkle faster. So 
get on keto. Make sure it's good fats and make sure your digestion's good too. And you're talking about the good fats. That is a, another good thing to talk about. We were actually eating in a restaurant yesterday that had a salad bar, and we saw several of our patients in there, and they were trying to do the right thing. They had them this huge salad, uh, which was great. But they were taking ranch dressing in scoopfuls. You know, it's a big thing in Texas. I don't know if it's... Plural, big scoops, multiple scoops. I don't know if ranch dressing is popular everywhere else, but in Texas, it's a big deal here. And I mean, they were just laying it on thick. And I thought, well, for everything you just tried to do right with the salad, like you said, the saturated fats are, are killing the outcome. And of course, you know... I know this because I sit with Dr. Lewis at lunch every day and he says, oh, my gosh, the saturated fats are having. <laughs> so. And it's not that I'm I'm not a perfect eater either, but you can take enough supplements. You can get by with a little bit more sin, but you still have to change your diet somewhat. Yeah. So you need to make sure your dressings are not full of junk, too, when you're trying to make better changes. And I know the kids all like ranch dressing. At least they do here. You can get a better ranch dressing. Janet yeah. feeds me ranch dressing, but it's the organic and the non-inflammatory inflammatory oils it's the stuff that they don't have on the shelf that's shelf stable right, we get ours out of the cold section because it's homemade so just read your ingredients on that and um i do want to make sure we address a couple of these questions before we run out of time i don't know how we run out of time so because fast i've got to go to probiotics so go ahead we will but let's make sure we get get this in here um, we want to make sure Lisa's question gets interested, uh, answered, <laughs> answered. I was reading adaptogens. Uh, she wants to hear more about ad- adaptogens like ashwagandha and mushrooms, uh, the Reiki mushrooms, cordyceps, health benefits. She wants to know, um, I guess, what are good ones, how to take them. Uh, you know, my favorite is called adaptanol, and it's a general one where we have some very specific to if your cortisol is too high or too low. This one's one that anybody can take. That's even our vegan uh, one because it doesn't have the um, yeah. the bovine in it. So yeah, that, that's, yeah. a, that's a good one for our vegans. And it, it's got, you know, some of the vitamins that are very good for calming the nerves down and adapting. It's got elethero root, rhodiola, schisandra, ashwagandha licorice root extract and that's really really good and yes i take mushrooms because i have to keep my immune system in good shape because it was kind of killed about 15 years ago with drugs in the hospital they did a good job on my spider bite but my immune system took a major hit so i do uh, mataki rishi and shiitake mushrooms Uh, we have that we have another product that actually is very very popular it has caterpillar mushroom, mataki, rishi, shiitake, snow fungus, split gills fungus, turkey tail mushroom. So we do use that a lot. And, you know, I think in America we've forgotten that our body is adaptable. Our body does have strength. It does have power. It does have the ability to heal. It always works for good. But you have to have the nutrition in there. And That's the nutritional side. You still have to have a good positive attitude. You still have to have uh, positive expectations. You have to speak positively. You have to be the light. And I think I put this on shooting straight the other day. You know, plants plants lean toward the light, and so do people. So you can be one of those people that promote light. (laughs) Like that. We also have Amani. That would like to know about red light therapy, the infrared sauna near versus the far benefits for detox because it's hard to work up a sweat. Well, I would say if it's hard to work up a sweat, tell Stan to take you jogging. And it's humid down there in New Orleans where you live. So um, Some people don't detox, though. I mean, they don't sweat because they need to detox. They don't detox well, too, right? Yeah, and one of the things is, of course, me being a chiropractor, you have to have a balance between the autonomic nervous system, you know, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. You've, you've got to have a balance there. So sometimes an adjustment will say, ooh, that's balanced, and they can start sweating and detoxing. I think the far infrared sauna is the bomb, and the red light therapy is good, but I'm not so sure it's about detox. The red light therapy is about wrinkles and about mitochondria increasing the energy um, brain function, 
Actually, I was thinking about buying one. They're pretty expensive. Although Eddie up around Chicago bought one, and he spent about twice as much as I planned to. He says it's working real well. But I think the red light therapy is good, but not for detox. I think far infrared sauna is the bomb. Very interesting. Well, we would like to hear about probiotics because I know that they're very important for all of us. And with ADD and obesity in children, explain to us what probiotics have to do with any of that. Yeah, in a nutshell, um, you have to understand your digestive tract, which those of you who have talked to me know that's 60 to 80% of your immune system. Your digestive tract has about 100 trillion microorganisms. And that's about 10 times the amount of cells that make up your entire body. There's a really good book called 10% Human. My brother loaned it to me, Dr. James Lewis, and I thought, oh, that's so good. I ordered that and a bunch more. Brandy asked Janet, says, does he really read those books? Yeah, dozens and dozens and dozens per year. Uh, So you have to get good probiotics in. Uh, your health is more under control of your gut bacteria than anything else. Gut bacteria are can help you lose weight. We have one that actually little bitty brandy says works. We've got some small people that are taking it. This is, oh, my God, I've lost weight. I can get in the bikini now. It can help. The gut bacteria can help you keep weight off for good, reduce depression and anxiety. You've heard me say that several times. The bifidobacterium and some of the lactobacillus does that. Reduces digestive stress, stays regular, reduces inflammation, and that inflammation is caused by these foods that create inflammation, mostly wheat, soy, corn, and dairy. It changes your cravings for those things, too, I've noticed. It really does. I don't crave sugar as much as I used to because that's usually the yeast that's craving it, not so much, you know, the, it's not out of your mind as much as it is out of your GI tract. And then the stuff that you thought used to taste good that was sugary and it doesn't taste like it did anymore because you've made gut changes. And as far as children Don't think they're going to outgrow this obesity. You better get started now. And one of the things you have to realize, if you were born vaginally, you're colonized by better bacteria this way than if you were born C-section. And you have a lower uh, protection against infection, allergies, and immune problems if you were born C-section. And we do have plenty of probiotics that are very safe and extremely beneficial for little kids. Uh, so wonder about, well, how was this child born and what should I do? Because when you get that gut back bacteria imbalance, that increases weight gain. And you can the women can have the weight gain even during pregnancy. That will cause overweight children to become overweight adults. And it gets to be kind of a vicious cycle, so to speak. And there was one more question that ties into your probiotic uh, line here mm-hmm. that we've had people asking us about allergies. You know, I don't know how they are where you are, but in East Texas, they are they're rampant right now because of the pollen going around, and it's creating a lot of sore throats. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the questions was, what do you what do you have for a sore throat? And we have one called Probiotic ENT, and it's um it's a strain a probiotic that you just suck on, and it stops the sore throat it's It's actually a strep but it's the good strep that kills the bad strep yeah see there you go it's uh it's it works very well so don't suffer with a sore throat there are options for that because that trickling down your throat is um not a good thing also um something called natural dehist has been very popular here because it does help the draining the Um, constant draining you have it helps dry that up also helps with the inflammatory foods too yeah and the other thing um you know if your child is overweight and you know we we say at about 100 pounds uh we can run lab work on them because many times things are missing i had a young lady the other day that she said her daughter just didn't feel good and we ran lab on her and she's extremely anemic So um, that would not have been found without lab. And for those of you that are new to listening to us, that's what we do. We don't guess at what's going on. We actually run lab work. That was in Virginia. We can do it in 47 states. Right. It's very low cost, and it takes the guesswork out of what's going on with your child. Her child also had adrenal problems, and 
uh, blood sugar problem. So it wasn't just, you know, one thing. So if you don't really know what's causing it, consider doing the lab. Go to our website at greenwisdomhealth.com. Fill out the health survey and we can help you get started figuring out what's going on with your your baby so that they can have a life worth living also. Because we want them healthy and happy and successful because they're going to support us in our old That's age, right. right? They're our future. <laughs> and we have enjoyed so much the interaction with you again today. And if uh, you have questions, please shoot them to Dr. Lewis on Shooting Straight on Facebook on his uh, group page, and he'll be happy to answer those. We really enjoy Uh, those comments and questions. And we hope you have a very blessed week and we'll be here next time on the Green Wisdom Health Show. Once again, our show has come to an end, but your hope in your health is only beginning. If you or a loved one are in need of a different outcome and are waiting for a brighter future, take the first step and go to our website and fill out the health survey. Please don't keep us a secret. If you know someone that could benefit from this podcast, please share this show with your friends and family. You're only one step away from a life worth living.